This morning, um, my name's Rebecca Marcy, a lot of familiar faces, and I've just met some of the new people. Um, today is just an overview for an hour, because there's a lot of knowledge that's coming already. Um, and so what I want to do is just to highlight a couple of things. In particular, the theme is, is what we call consistency. Um, because I get a lot of questions about, well, how do I lose the weight? How do I get fit? It goes back to you know, the specific behaviours you have to work on to get to that overall goal. I mean, who likes the idea of being fit? Losing weight, isn't it nice? Mm -hmm. Have a tiny house. But mm -hmm. it's really breaking it down to all the specific things I need to do in order to get to that outcome. It's not just the things to do, it's also being consistent. So having a good day of eating. You know, we say that, oh, I've been really good today. It has to be multiple good days. And so we're going to have a look at that today. But it's not just what to do. You might be sitting here thinking, I already know what to eat. I already know how to be healthy. Maybe it's the how to do it. And that also incorporates the mindset. Does anyone ever talk themselves in or out of doing things? Yeah. And being thin, I'm very That quite often our emotions can get in the way of, of doing the things we need to do. So that, that's what we're going to look at today. But before that, um, just to let you know, next week I'll also be doing a talk. So I'll be here next week. Um, haven't really decided what to talk about, but <laughs> that, that's really a good thing because within the week, if you want to give Gary some tips, um, let me know because this is about you. Um, and so with, with the um, fitness challenge, well, I'm designing the four week review. Um, the rest of it's up to you, so you feed me um, all the things you want to know. So I'm going to provide you with my email address at the end. So any questions or anything in length that you might feel uncomfortable to talk about here. I'm actually really happy to set a time up and chat to you on the phone. That's that's part of the service because I live in Kaima. I'm a local, um, have a private practice, so if you want to see me personally or just on the phone for a bit of a chat, I'm happy to do that too. So this is a little hierarchy because, um, like I said before, a lot of the questions I do get is at that point in time when you've got a really good idea of what you want to do, you've got a goal in mind, but then sometimes life can get in the way. Who finds that? You know, you've got the best of intentions and then, you know, you go on holidays or kids get sick and, and everything just goes out the window. So what tends to happen is we lose that consistency in how we think. We get a bit irrational. Has anyone, has anyone had this time where you've had a not so good afternoon with eating and then you go, well, I've blown it. I'll start again next week. I've had that before. <laughs> well, we all do. It's like, I'm, I'm a dietitian, but hello, I'm a human being too. <laughs> so we tend to get irrational in how we think. This is the rational side of it. So at any point in time in the fitness challenge, because four weeks doesn't sound long, but things can get in the way. And those who did the challenge last time, I'm going to let the people who didn't do the challenge last time, give them a bit of a tip. That challenge was, was eight weeks, wasn't it? Mm. Yes. Yep. Got to the fourth week, and I'm kidding you not, everyone was sitting there going, oh, it's Easter and, and everyone's going to go hair shaped. I'm thinking, it's going to be Yeah. What have I just been talking about? So people are going back to the default of, oh, look, life's going to get in the way, and I can see, foresee a big lapse. So within those four weeks, <laughs> um, within those four weeks, you know, I'll, I'll guarantee by the second week, sometimes things might get shaky. So whenever you've got irrational thoughts, that's the logic, that's your brain. And I want you to really start to think about what do I need to do to get back on track? And usually it's the, <coughs> the mindset. So I'm going to give you a see So what I'm going to do is just go over some of these points. And like I said, there's a lot of stuff you already know. But the reason why I've given you a pen is when we go through the points, it's just to tick off the things you already know and doing, but then potentially circle the things you could work on. Unless you're perfect, I ask that every challenge, perfect people can leave right now, <laughs> and I can have a word on you and get some tips. The people who are human and not so perfect, um, Jen, whose pens aren't working? Mine. <laughs> so I'm going to pass these around. Um, people who write things down are 10 times more likely to do it. Who's had the best of intentions? You go to the grocery store without a shopping list. You come out with the things that you really like, but you come out with the toilet rolls and the essentials that you're not. So what I'd like you to do is, as we go through it, um, I'm going to break it down into what to do in terms of the what to eat. Then it's the how to eat. Now that sounds simple, but we're going to talk a bit about mindful eating. Ever been in the cupboard just eating out of a packet? <laughs> eating with the television on? <laughs> Our grandparents would roll around in their graves, or what we did. It's eating like the Japanese and French do. So if you ever want to eat like um, a healthy person, eat like the Japanese and French. Not the ones who have been westernised, the traditional ones. We'll get back to that. But it's also the why, and the why will be governed by the 
thought process. So that's what we're going to look at, but let's look at the first part. It's the second category called eat whole foods. The biggest question we get a lot is, I always gain money, I'm always unhealthy during winter. Who finds that that's the thing, that you want comfort foods, and quite often people go, that's the time where I'm not eating some salad and I don't feel as healthy. Well, I beg to differ, because when you think about it, you're changing with the season. So you can still eat salad in winter, but things like cucumbers and all that really aren't in season. What you want to do is change it to suit the climate. So that's called winter warming comfort foods. And foods can be comforting without the calories, I kid you not. And a lot of you will know, because a lot of master chefs in this room. I know when I did some cooking demos last year, I've got some great tips for you. So if you look at the, the whole foods, it's getting back to basics, things that come from the ground. Things are out of the packet. So if you look at the first one, I've put seasoned vegetables and herbs and spices. So, you know, in winter, it's really jazzing it up a bit and going for the winter warming soups. And the research says that people who actually have soup in their diet eat less calories over the whole day. Who finds that they get really comfort from, from a good bowl of soup? It's also roast, so, you know, chucking in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I really don't. I, don't. I, don't. I, don't. I, don't. I eat it and I'm like, oh, that's and then about a half an hour to an hour later, I'm going, well, now I need something to crunch on. Yeah. <laughs> and it's interesting. Don't think you're doing so much. That shows you it's not a one-size-fits-all. What some people will do will have to start off with to, to fill themselves up. You have a pure vegetable soup, then you have your main meal. You could do that. One of the soup recipes I've put in the first week is a chicken and barley soup, so it's kind of a soupy casserole thing. But the second week, I've got a carrot and orange soup, which is bursting with colour, and it's just, it's just beautiful. And that's not chunky, but it still is actually quite comforting because what I've put in it is carrots, so vitamin A, oranges, so when you think of the season, think the fruits and the grapefruits, the tangelos, the mandarins. I've put curry powder in it, just a bit, and also ginger. So when you think of winter warming foods that fire up the system, they're the things that really will sustain you. But remember, with the meal plans that I've um, been developing, don't take it like gospel. <coughs> you might think, I don't like that, or my kids would need that, don't eat it. Just, just with that meal plan is tick things that you could, that you potentially might like. So when you think about the fruits, there's a lot of um, misconceptions out there about fruit and sugar. And sugar is the enemy. And that's right in the sense that you have too much sugar, not healthy. But let's, let's face it, fruit comes from a tree, it's, it's healthy. Um, if you eat too much, then you're in trouble. But fruit, when you think about it, it's a perfect snack that's in its own package. And there's a lot of fruit in it. You know, at the moment, so pink lady apples are in season. So go with the season. So um, what I'd like you to do as we're going through it is maybe you might tick the things that you could work on more. Because when you talk about vegetables, for example, my golden rule of thought is with vegetables and salad, I call that colour, is we always have colour at both lunch and dinner. And half our meal should be based on vegetables or salad. You might think, oh, maybe my ratio for protein, veggies, carbs, maybe a bit out of whack. That's one of the biggest things because that's going to fill you up. But it's not enough alone like you said all this before. I mean, it may need some more crunch. Maybe there's no protein in the soup. So it's really getting back to balance. Can I just ask, you know how you gave that time about the last challenge? Yes. Salt, yes. I was just thinking, you know, like some of us are so far removed from mm. the growing fruit and vegetables that yeah. they're not, because everything's available all the time, they're mm -hmm. not all that hope far you what is food and seasonal food mm. and vegetable? Okay, was well, that something that you'd like in terms mm. of just a little list? Okay, so what I can do by next week is I'll have a nice little list of what's in season mm. for the months and what to look out for. And I can do that, so just mention it, Gary. Okay. All right, we'll go. Yeah. <laughs> it's on. Yeah. And if it doesn't have to work, okay. Yeah. So what we can do is map out what's coming in season. Some of the supermarkets, bigger supermarkets, will have little recipe cards and say zucchinis, home season zucchini soup or whatever. But that's something I can do because then you can actually forecast what's going to be in season. And what I've tried to do with the menu is actually maximise what is in season as well. Yeah, I would have thought that. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to do a cucumber, no. a gazpacho, mm -hmm. <laughs> even if that's a yeah. chilled soup. <laughs> I wouldn't do that in the winter, unless that works for you. <laughs> Another question I get when it comes to whole foods is, you know, flu. You know, I've got a cold, 
well, the flu, you know, how do I ward off? Well, it goes back to, you know, general hygiene, good sleep, stress management, but also some of the foods. So, well, I've talked about fruit and vegetable vitamin C. It's also zinc, <coughs> and the foods that are really rich in zinc are all those protein foods. And you can see there, you might think, you know, am I getting enough variety of protein in my diet? So you've got the plant protein, so you've got soybeans, which might be tofu, you know, cannellini beans, chickpeas. And then you've also got the lean um, uh, animal protein, so your chicken, your fish, your red meat, um, your eggs. And so another rule of thought, which a lot of you would already do this, is to include both protein <coughs> at both lunch and dinner. And when you look at um, calorie burning, protein is the macronutrient that burns more calories. It actually sustains you. Who finds that they do feel quite full? It doesn't mean full protein and nothing else, but having enough protein at lunch and dinner will sustain you. So what I've tried to do in the menu plan is to mix up the proteins, change it around a bit, and there's a lot of recipes where I've got, for example, healthy satay, and then you can choose the type of protein on what suits the family. So that's another thing is, is enough zinc in the diet. Um, who finds they get a bit scared of carbohydrates? I mean, there's so mm -hmm. much review about cutting out carbs, mm -hmm. what Jennifer Anderson does, etc., etc. Carbs are really good for you, and uh, it's really what I call being carb smart. Mm -hmm. So, really, what it's looking at is less of the white stuff and more of the whole grain stuff. So, I've actually listed the, the, the wonder grains. So, with the low GI carbs or grains, you eat oats, quinoa, what's well, spelled, spelled canola. It's actually, I had to find out. I had to do a talk once and thought, God, it'll be some day, I still probably um, get it wrong, but quinoa. Um, you've got uh, barley, rye, and buckwheat. So, this week's menu, I've got the barley and the chicken and barley soup. I've got a few quinoa recipes. Um, and the following week, I have a quinoa porridge with roasted hazelnuts. So, there's lots of different sort of ways of being carb uh, smart. Does couscous come over there? Yeah, good question. So couscous is a very good grain. It's medium GI, it's not low, but it's not bad. So when you're looking at, and I'll show you this, I actually just purchased these the other day. And we're going to look at one of the other categories will be portion, portion. My other half hates that, it's always portion, portion. That, you know, you might be eating the good grains, but how much is on the plate? Yeah, and when you think of couscous and rice and things like that, it's easy just to be a bit heavy head, particularly the hungry. Um, so when you look at in terms of the ratio, that's, they're actually plates you can purchase. And I've got um, a residential care facility. They're people with intellectual disabilities, and they're actually cooking their own meals, trying to be independent. And one of the biggest things is there's a lot of weight issues, diabetes and stuff. And so what we came up with um, in terms of an idea is actually having something visual so then they know how much to put in their plates. They're having just a lot of traditional meals of um, grilled meats and vegetables. And you can see here with the carbs, it's usually an open fist like that of carbs, and that would equate to half to one cup cooked. So in the meal plan, what I've put is if you want to add carbs to your to your dinner, I've actually put the amount. So in terms of the amount, <laughs> it would be half a cup to one cup cooked. So carbs aren't the absolute essential uh, macronutrient for dinner. It's the protein and veg, but carbs are really high in fibre. Um, they've got a lot of nutrition in them. And who finds that sometimes you've just done your exercise and you really feel like something hungry? So it's just being carb smart. So for some people, what they think of is, I'm just going to start using measuring, measuring cups to be consistent. So we go back to being consistent. You might be eating the right foods, but only being consistent with portions. And I'll be honest, if I don't have that measuring cup in my oats and muesli mm -hmm. container, mm -hmm. I'll just free pour. Yeah. And I'll go through the packet, you know, twice as yeah, so if you're having, when you're having breakfast, um, porridge would be about half a cup raw of your oats. Something flaky, a flaky cereal would be up to one cup. Um, but I've also put that in my, um, yeah, oats would be a third to half a cup. It just depends on how you <laughs> That's uncooked. Yeah, but I just, fry, I just do it in the oven with my... Yeah. No, like I'm frying off and then I put it in here. Yeah. I'm not frying off. Oh, you mean it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. she's fine. Yeah, so it's fair. Yeah, so because I add um, nuts and yeah. seeds. Yep, so um, usually it would be about half. Um, porridge would be about a third, but if you're adding fruit, that's <laughs> 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 oh, I think I have. Yeah. I've got a small bowl, so that I can't. <laughs> 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 not the bowl, the bowl. 
Oh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. It's yeah, but I might. It's, I think it's a bit rough. It's a lot of people in the head. If you're going to have a big plate with a little bit of carbs, it's going to be a bit of a big on the plate. You use a smaller plate, we use smaller, smaller bowls, which is great. You can see here that that's something to increase. So you might be ticking, I'll do all that. Or maybe you're circling something you need to be consistent with. But then a lot of patients come in and see me and say, tell me what I can't eat. I'm like, there's nothing that you can't not eat unless you've got an allergy. However, there are some foods that you eat less of. So I've put reduce the extra foods. And so the extra foods are the non-foods, I really call them. They're there for probably um, two types of um, situations. Social, enjoying yourself, having a drink with the girls. <laughs> and two, or, <laughs> or when you're stressed or maybe a stimulant just to get you through the day. Okay? So start to think about your ratio. Am I being consistent with my whole foods? Or do I need to cut down the extra foods to then be able to eat the whole foods? And I've seen this time and time again. I had a patient yesterday. When you look at the first stimulant, coffee. Coffee's great, okay? <laughs> don't, don't think it's bad. It's just how much you're having. And he was actually having a lot. And when I actually mapped his eating patterns, his coffee intake was at the times when he needed to be eating. So all he said was, right, what I'm going to do is still have my first shot of coffee because he's got seven children. Oh, he's going to try and experiment. We'll see if it works. I'll get back to you. Before he has a coffee, because what happens to yourself if you say, don't have the coffee, don't think about the coffee? You want you want you want one. One. Yeah. Don't think about the coffee. Exactly. He's going to actually have breakfast and then decide to have a coffee. Or I'm going to have a bit of a morning tea snack, a piece of fruit. Then if I want the coffee, mm. I'll have the coffee. Guess what? You probably won't want the coffee. Because it's what he's, he's actually looking for some sort of stimulant. So have a think about, am I having a good amount of coffee or too much energy drinks? I've got fruit juice and the sweet dairy drinks. What I mean by that is the, the, the fake coffees, the mocha frappuccino, the egg caramel, latte, whatever. So just being aware of those things. If that's your favourite thing, enjoy it. So one thing I talk about is choose your treats. So I've had many patients come in and say, and I don't know, this happens all the time with me, business dinner with the Rotary Club, then you've got you know the mother's birthday, then you've got girlfriends, and there's all these social events. And who finds that sometimes you think that whole healthy eating plan has just gone out that We know. So one of the things I put <coughs> down there, and it comes down on the, the first one of have a plan, is choose your treats wisely. If you know social events that are coming up, you might go, you know what, I'm gonna actually have a plan. When I met up with girlfriends, I don't have a piece of cake because that's kind of a birthday thing. But when I go to mum's, I'm actually just going to go, no, I'll have this kind of thing. And if you're just a bit more consistent and planned, it will actually work. I've also put diet products. So chuck out anything diet. You don't need diet yogurt. You don't need really a lot of low fat anything. So go back to the, the nice tasting yogurts, but less of it. So my golden rule um, thumb is half a cup of any yogurt you want. Is that in the whole day, yes. isn't it? Um, that's as a, as a snack. So you might find if it's part of your breakfast, you've got that with some muesli, that's fine. But you know, you need a couple of serves of dairy a day. If you're not a non-dairy eater, then you can have almond milk, rice milk, soy milk, oat milk, whatever. But go back to something really creamy. What I'm going to do um, this afternoon is go to the local IGA, because I know a lot of you shop there, and write down some of my favourite foods. And so when you think about yummy yogurts like Tamar Valley or Jam, yeah, I love it. It's just so creamy. So train yourself to eat less of it, and that's actually quite filling compared to all of the diet stuff. So you don't need the diet stuff because it's full of uh, false foods. Mm -hmm. Alcohol, I'll leave that to you. It's just moderation. <laughs> what I'm going to do is also, I have an additive card. So this was with the last group, but he finds that you know, there's a lot of media. Um, attention on nasty additives and preservatives, particularly with our children. So one thing that you might think of, well, I think I eat all the right products, but I'm going to give you a little card, which is great just to pop in your pocket or your purse and check that when you're in the supermarket. And I also have one called Draw the Line, and it actually helps you read about food labels as well. So you might go, you know what, I'm actually still not sure about the products in my house. Before you get rid of them, you don't have to. Just check out where they are. Some of those additives can cause behavioural issues with your children. That's a nice, a nice excuse for the interaction with Feral. You can just say that a nasty attitude. Um, but also, um, headaches, sinus, husband, yeah, well, not that much children. <laughs> so that's some of the extra things I want to move on because that's kind of the obvious thing. And who's found they've ticked all those things? Who finds they're doing all that really well? No, no. Okay. Maybe 
feel better because I'm not going to be working on things in the future. Um, one thing I should have put is hydration water, and that's one thing I need to work on. Don't forget that herbal tea um, is counted as, as a fluid, so you can actually have herbal tea too. A fluid. A fluid tea. Yeah. Green tea, unless you are like a warfarin, be careful. <laughs> Just listen to this one. Um, if you are a warfarin, be careful. Um, but yeah, herbal tea and green tea will count. So when you look at your fluid intake, Eight glasses of water a day is just on average, but it's kind of incorrect because everyone is different. Mm -hmm. But fluid like your green tea or herbal tea will count in your fluid mm -hmm. quota. If on a few people drink water, I love it. Mm -hmm. Or a coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so that, that's, is that pretty clear as well? Because mm -hmm. what I want to do is to really, at the next point, is to really pick your brain, literally, and get you really thinking about your whole attitude towards the fitness challenge, potential pitfalls that might get in the way as well. But just quickly look on the left hand side, I've actually put plan, if you fail or plan, you plan to fail. So for you, you might go, I don't know what to eat, but I've just got to write a super, uh, supermarket shopping list. Maybe you need to write one there. Maybe you need to write a seven day meal plan, and this is something I've been getting back into because I've just been pretty busy with a job before. Now on Sunday, it's only taking me about half an hour just to quickly go, what are the recipes I'm going to use? And then it's lovely for the rest of the week you've got, you know, it's on, on, on the menu. Um, prepare home cooked meals. Some of my patients will say, I've written a plan, but then when I'm really hungry and I'm driving home, it kind of goes out the window and I don't want to try to and get takeaway. So for you it might be, I'm aiming to have three or four home cooked meals this week. Let's be realistic. So what I want you to do is really think about your, your life and how to be consistent. Sometimes when we're not consistent, it's because we're overestimating how much we can do. So be really, yeah, be, be kind to yourself and really think about what can I achieve. Manage time better. So it's not that we're time poor, we're just poor time managers. And so for me to write a shopping list and do a meal plan, I've actually had to schedule more the time because that was my excuse. Oh, I don't have time, but I'm booking in patients, blah, 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 blah. No, it was just me. So I don't have children yet, so no excuse. <laughs> so I just have patience and too many of them. <laughs> and I've also put choose treats wisely. So like I said, I think it was great that when we had the fitness challenge last time, it was around Easter, and people were like, why did you do that? It was the best thing, because those of you who were here, we spent ages unpacking people's heads. <laughs> what was going on? They're going, oh, so I'm normal. No, you're normal. And the way you think can really affect what you're supposed to do. And that's what I'm going to get into now. It's change your mindset. So you can see here I've put... <laughs> um, it is what you can and will do, not can't do. So who finds that sometimes that they talk themselves in and out of doing things? Or you know, you really get disappointed with yourself. Maybe you've raised the bar too high. Mm. So I've put set a realistic goal. So when you talk about an overall arching goal like um, increase energy, lose weight, increase fitness, it's not a behaviour. It's not telling you what you have to do. And it's a long journey. So we know with the research, if we go to weight loss per month, it's one to four kilos per month. No more. So for some people, you might be losing one kilo every month. For others, it might be four kilos in two weeks. Everybody is different. Metabolism is different. But you've got to cut yourself slack because you, the weight doesn't just fall off, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so maybe your realistic goal is, look, I'm going to monitor my weight, but I'm going to focus and track the behaviours. Because let's talk about consistency. Consistency with weight, you can't just get on the scales and sit there every week and go, oh, another one kilo, another one kilo, another one kilo. It's going to be inconsistent with weight because your body is very different at the rate at which you will lose weight and increase your fitness. But if the more consistent you are with this, you may not see it on the scales. Perhaps the time for your run is better. There is going to be consistency with the whole breadth of the application that we're going to use, whether it's um, your stretches, your, your, your running, um, your cardio workout, whatever the case may be. So have to think about that. What is realistic in the next four weeks, given everything else going on in my life? Because the life stuff that will get in the way of doing this. So you've got to really think about what can I change, and what are the things I have to accept that it's just going to happen. You might have five birthday parties in the next four weeks. Choose them wisely. <laughs> I've got one next week. Um, of CBT because I want you to think about you may already know what to eat and you've got the plan, you've got the food, but at the last minute you talk yourself out of it. Or you've had a bit of a silly afternoon and you go, why can't I do that? <laughs> there are two ways of thinking. You can go, I've blown it, 
and I basically just finished the rest of the tin cans. That's, that's thinking, that eh? Or you can go, no, you know what? I've eaten four tin cans, that's cool. If I stop now, I'll just get back on track. Who thinks like the latter? Who think, thinks of the former? Who, who gets a bit sort of, I've blown it, I've ruined the week, I'll start again next week, anything like that? Fantastic. Okay, so I'm just, I'm not really not really. And this is not just about food. It might be about if you're getting weighed in or you've just done an exercise class with Gary and it hasn't been as good as you thought. Are you going to beat yourself up or are you going to go, you know what? It's cool. I'm a bit huffy and puffy today, but I'll just keep persisting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so how do you think about a situation, whether you're getting on the scales going, or whether you're in the supermarket going, oh, two for five dollars. Whatever the case may be, how do you think decides what you do and therefore how you feel. So it might be reacting to the demands of your family and when you get a bit annoyed, sometimes our default could be a bit of wine, it could be food, it could be a cigarette, it could be whatever. So you can see that our health behaviour is always affected by our emotions and also by the thought process. So there are two ways of thinking and that's what I put in the, um, the format. You might have to tick this or maybe you're doing really well. There are two ways of thinking. There's a positive way of thinking, I call those helpful thought thoughts. And I put here, um, practice helpful thinking every day. So that could be more of a helpful thought, like, so I didn't lose the weight I wanted to lose this week, but just keep persisting. Or there's an unhelpful way of thinking, I've blown it. Maybe I need to cut back more, or maybe I need to increase my exercise more. And you might be going up a notch. And remember the whole hair and tortoise race? The more you sprint, the more you last the distance. So can anyone think of a point in time where your thoughts are a little bit unhelpful? Is there anything that you find that sometimes you might self-sabotage and it might ruin your best of intentions? Has that ever happened to you? Do you want to give an example? Particular times of the month for me. Yes. yes. When I'm hitting yeah. Yep. time. So that's actually affected by the other barrier to be situations. So that could be premenstrual. Mm. It could be children. Could be the mother in law visit. <laughs> could be weather. Could be injury. But can you see that those situations in life will really affect this? The last time, I remember the last challenge, it was Easter, and everyone was coming in here going, already going, it's going to be worse. It's going to be the worst Easter ever. It's going to be really bad. So you'd already predicted that it was going to be bad before it even happened. So it's kind of like a fake and complete. Um, the same with you know, birthday parties. Oh, I've got this birthday party I'm going to. What am I going to do? So, you can't always control situations. You can't control your children. You can't get rid of them, but... <laughs> you can't... <laughs> yeah, you could be. <laughs> um, you can't control the weather, but what you can control is what goes through your mind, how that makes you feel, and therefore what you do. So you actually have control like this. Who sometimes feels like you're a bit out of control of this? I sometimes do it, particularly if it is at that time. And you just feel like everything's irrational. When things are irrational, do we have the capacity to make good decisions? No. no. That's when we go to hell with it. Yeah. So at that point in time, that's what I've put here. It's not just having a helpful way of thinking. It's not being Pollyanna going, oh, the world's wonderful, and I'm wonderful. It might be, you know, every little bit will make a difference. And one of the biggest barriers that comes across in my practice is patients, particularly women, who are really motivated. They want to do everything. Yet their confidence is really low, and the reason why is they think, I've got this goal I want to achieve, it seems so far away. What, the, what are these small things that I'm going to do? Will they ever make a difference? So that I, you know, so what, I had a healthy snack this afternoon, how, how is that going to help me? But when you think about the consistency every day, the more you do that every day, it will get you somewhere. So maybe one of your helpful thoughts might be, every bit will make a difference, or this is for me, not for the kids, this is for me. So you've got to practice in order to make this work, if your inconsistency is here, just as we have to eat healthy every day and exercise, if there's no consistency with our thoughts, that's never going to happen. So have a think about 
that. That's something I've had to do certainly with um, a stressful job I had last year is to really practice in my head. You know, you can do this, it's not going to last forever. Otherwise, it can ruin you know, the, the best of intentions. I was also put here prepare for lapses and relapse. Can you tell me the difference between a lapse and a full on relapse? There, there are differences with what it is. A lapse is. Short term. Yeah, relapse. short term. Yeah. Throw it out a few months later. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. It's gone into hibernation. Yeah. Yeah. Months later. Yeah. So a lapse. Yeah. That's right. Oh, I think I'm going to face the music. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lapse is look, I missed an exercise class or I ate something really silly this afternoon. I don't know, I was just having one of those days. So, like I said before, it goes back to how you interpret those situations. So, at that point in time, do you think I've blown it? Oh, or you know what? It's Friday. I'll start again on Monday and ruin the next few days. Or do you think you know what? It's cool. I'll get on track right now. A relapse is completely tossing everything out the window. That would be crossing all these off, tearing it up, tearing it up, <laughs> burning it. This says a lot, doesn't it? Um, <coughs> so lapse may be a couple of these things that you've gone off track. The longer you leave it the further you'll get away from your goal. So one small silly thing, let me give you an example. So I had a lady in my practice yesterday who, um, she said, look, because I said to her, do you believe if you had an afternoon of maybe eating too much, do you believe that will cause weight gain? And she said, yes. What do you think? She does. sometimes thinks that if you think, oh well, you know, I've had something silly in the afternoon, I've ruined it. And sometimes we think like that. So let's go back to logic. Yeah, yeah, let's think about it. You may have overeaten, let's say, 300 calories in the afternoon. You, you overate something, right? If you stop right there and got back on track, you've just overeaten 300 calories. But if you've eaten 300 calories and went, you know what, the afternoon, I've blown it, and I'll go back in the evening and eat another 300 calories, that's mm -hmm. 600. And then the rest of the week, times that by a couple of thousand, that's weight gain. So you can see there's a difference. So if there's inconsistency with how you think, it will ruin the behaviour, and then you won't get to your goal. So if you can stop it, and sometimes within the four weeks, if you haven't ever seen this before, from some of you guys, you said, oh, I used to think like that. Um, the best thing to start thinking about is how you are thinking. So catch yourself in situations, and it's really perplexing how the mind works. Catch yourself thinking like this and go, you know what, I need a plan. So if you've got a consistent plan, then you'll be more likely to, to keep that on track. I've also put in the right hand side improving eating habits. So it's not just the what to eat, it's the how to eat as well. And what I mean by that is I've talked about portions, um, regular meals and mid meals. Now, People say, if I eat regularly, that's going to burn the metabolism. No, that's not true. It's the total caloric or calorie intake for the day. However, there's kind of an indirect relationship between regular meals, appetite, and weight. Who finds that if there's a big gap between the meal, you're more likely to overeat the next meal? I find it kind of bad news by, by the, the evening. So the reason why we talk about snacks in between is it keeps you going. For the next meal, potentially, if you, I mean, if you've done some exercise, it actually helps replenish those glycogen stores if you just use the muscles. But yeah, those snaps are there to just keep you going for the next meal. So some people tick that and go, well, I know if I eat regularly, that's going to help with my food portions. So you can see how they're all interrelated. Mm -hmm. I've also put, um, I'll come back to the third one, that practice mindful eating. Who's read about mindful eating? Mm -hmm. So remember I said before, have a think about, oh, uh, in the afternoon, do I sort of go and cover and have a pick at things? So actually eating at the dinner table. So um, a couple of my clients have been working on, when they have dinner, TV off, and the family come and sit together at a table. So mindful eating. And so that's what the, the French do too. Um, eating with utensils. Um, so a plate, knife, fork, But actually, Putting the fork down, eating slowly. <coughs> Who finds it hard to eat 
Yeah. Let's be realistic, like, okay? <laughs> On contract, you see our members from the Defence Force, and they have a culture yeah. meeting quickly. So if you can't change your, your habits, maybe you can work around it. So some people will use, like you said, at least you've got a small bowl for, for breakfast. But so mindful eating might be just one thing. Maybe when you're at work, not eating at your desk, maybe going out for 10 minutes just to get some sunshine, some vitamin D, and just change, change the situation. I also have put here, um, this is a Japanese philosophy of harahachi bu, eating, like, eating until you're 80% full. Does anyone find that hard? Like, you might be with your plate going, oh, I can stop here, but then you eat all of it. So harahachi bu is trying to have at least 20% of your stomach empty. Um, it's kind of, there's an Indian philosophy like that as well. Um, so for you, that might be something that you serve a lot of, I need to stop when I'm full. Eat with my hungry. Um, <coughs> so the research is coming out. It's about rewiring your appetite, which sounds really simple, like eat me a hungry finish before you get hello. <laughs> We're in a society where we are affected by so many things, but maybe that's just something that you're going to work on in the next four weeks. Is going back to basics, whole foods, eating mindfully, and having the right way of thinking. It sounds really simple, but the more complex people make bowl of table, the worse. There's no complex formula. It's just being in tune with your body with what you need to eat, how you're going to do it, and then, and then why you need to do it. That's related to all the triggers that will govern what we eat and don't eat. Non-hungry eating is also there as well. Um, Non-hungry eating, there's a lot of literature out there. Rick Horsman is kind of a guru. And non-hungry eating is, is tapping into what we talked about before, so eating when you're not hungry. So that's when you're stressed, had a bad day, just because we like the taste of food, no one else is in the house, you go, oh, I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> there are so many things that, that are related to it. So maybe that might be something that you work on, is first of all to discover when non-hungry eating is happening, and then secondly, what you can do about it. Sometimes how you can do that is to be a food detective and actually keep a food and mood diary. Um, so I haven't just put food diary, I've actually put mood. Because who hasn't really kept a record of what they've eaten and then you can work out the triggers and go, oh, there's an interesting pattern that's happening every afternoon. <laughs> so what food diaries are, uh, are being like a um, naughty school child hanging in your closet, right? Some people like food diaries and some people hate them because some people will focus on the 10% of the not so good day, right? For other people, it's an awareness of now I know what's going on. So that can actually help you address and identify that non hungry eating. Yeah. Oh, there you go, that's great. Right. Yeah. So, just accountability, and the literature does suggest that people who keep a food diary are more likely to keep to their, their, um, their diet. Diet, I mean, by their, their lifestyle. So, that's kind of in a nutshell in terms of the things that have gone through my head over the past week of what will actually help you achieve the goal. Now obviously exercise is another area and the reason why I've left that out is Gary is the person who might really pick his brain um, and that's all going to be very different depending on the person. But this is just about your, your eating behaviours and about being consistent with it. So the things that people have kind of circled that they might work on. Mm -hmm. So every week it might be for five or ten minutes to know how am I going with it. I'm going to kick start you with that because sometimes writing out a plan can really help things work. So I'm going to hand this out. Can I get questions so far? Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. I've got a little card. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's one thing. I guess I don't. Yeah. I just have numbers and I've got no idea. What's that? I don't know. Yeah, Jen was just asking about allergies. And um, there are quite a few. Manufacturers are getting very clever because they realise that they're going to make more sales if they don't have preservatives. And the biggest one is um, sulfites and copionates. Copionates are in red. Um, but I'm going to give you a little card because it'll have not only the name but also the number. So then you know. But it's amazing. I've seen children with terrible behaviour once you cut out the aggies and what you do. So you can see that people say, what's the recipe for success? And this is research based, so it's not just making it up. To be successful, there are three ingredients. First of all, you've got to have a goal. 
and you might think, what is my challenge goal? So if you want to, you know, you might do it now, you might want to sit down and maybe want to think about it. What's your challenge goal? It's your overall goal. What I want you to think about when you write this down is, is it realistic in my life circumstances? You know, is the goal realistic now compared to maybe three months ago? So have a think about what your overall goal is. You might write down, but like I said, you might do it in your own time. So what's your overall goal in four weeks? Um, the second thing is, what do I need to do to achieve my target? And that's where this comes into play. So there's two parts, your nutrition, and that's all that. So you might write down a couple of those little points that you'll circle. So for example, it might be colour at lunch and dinner, so veg at the salad lunch and dinner. It might be uh, not hungry eating, um, helpful thinking, I'm just fucking this out of here. And there's also exercise goals, so that's something that you'll be working with Gary in terms of you know, how often are you doing the sessions, have you got a good mix of resistance training, cardio. Um, so have a think about that. <coughs> so I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. So have a think about that. But then it comes down to the second part, which is motivation. So motivation is an interesting word. It's, it's a bit of a buzzword. And motivations, it's interesting. It's trying to sell the concept of what you want to achieve to yourself. So what that means is, it's reminding yourself, what are the benefits for me? Because who finds that you know, the huffing and puffing when you're bunny, no offence Gary, is not so attractive. Or even the porridge in the morning when you think, oh, I like the bacon, sunny, or whatever. At that point in time, that may not be attractive, but it may be the benefits. So who sometimes reminds himself when they are exercising, you can do this, you're going to feel great, or you're eating your lovely porridge in the morning, you think, you know, this is actually filling me, and if I do this, I won't eat sweet things in the morning. So what you're trying to do is remind yourself of the benefits. Because the mundane behaviours you're working on every day, sometimes we do lose sight of the overall goal. Does anyone sometimes do that? You're like, why am I doing this? And you're in that rat race. Sometimes you want to bring to the forefront, <coughs> I'm doing this for me, um, the more I do this, better I'll feel. But sometimes people need to remind themselves of consequences. I don't want to go back to what I was before. So some people respond to the, the, the positive spin on things. What have I got to gain? Other people respond to the negatives. It's kind of like giving yourself a kick in the pants. Like, pull your finger around and just do it. Because if you don't, you're going to end up worse. Now, for some people, fear tactics can sort of put them off. And that's if you're low in confidence. If you're low in confidence, Sometimes you've got to be more of a coach to yourself and think more positive. Other people need to be really realistic and go, you know, pull your head in and just do it. So have a think about the, the aspects of motivation that will work for you. And when you're through the challenge, if you find that you're just losing sight, that's what you need to go back to. Because maybe it's consistency in your level of motivation. If there's no motivation, it's not going to work. So then you've got to think about, have I got the right goal? Maybe I've aimed too high. Anyone tried to aim a bit too high with goals in your target? Yeah, so it's only three weeks, you just got to be realistic. The third part of that is your strategies. <coughs> and strategies come back to these things here. They're all barriers. Situations, your thinking, how you're feeling, and the actual behaviours. And so it's not a negative thing, it's just being realistic and thinking in the next four weeks, what is going to potentially get in the way for me? And is that in my control? And then it's what do I need to do in order to overcome those obstacles? And that can be part of you know, support. Maybe it's something you have to ask Gary. Oh, look, I'm just a bit worried because the next week I've got all these commitments, but I want to maintain my fitness. What can I do? Some home exercises if I can't get to the class. Um, if it's something related to your mindset, or something with food, you can use me for. Set up a time to speak to me. These four weeks is to look at what do I need to do to help me keep on track. And support is a huge part of it. It might be support from the family and say, I need to speak to Hubby or my partner because I actually want to go and do this fitness class. Can you babysit? Or I really would like to cook some different meals at home. Do you mind if we do this or try things? And then, you know, encourage the kids not say, oh, what's that? <laughs> so, you know, think about support. What's going to help me get through these four weeks? Particularly if you've got to make some benefits. Who finds that when you start to feel healthier, it actually just, the rest of the follows? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you might find, while that may seem a lot that you may have circled, you work on one, 
the rest will follow. Like I said before, if you're eating regular in the day, portions won't be so bad. If you're eating healthier, you're feeling healthier, then you've got more energy to do your exercise. So it tends to have what we call a positive upward spiral effect. A negative downward spiral is if one bad thing happens, and then like a domino effect, everything else follows. The rest will follow if you haven't got that in check. Dominoes won't fall if you've got the right way of thinking you can stop it from happening. Mm. So I want to sort of stop at the 4, 9, 30, because I want to spend 10 minutes with you if, if there's anything you want to throw at me.